Heat comprises half of the world's total energy consumption and contributes to more than 40% of global energy-related carbon dioxide emissions. But the biggest user is the industry that uses 50% of all heat. While solutions are being commercialized for low-temperature heat applications, high-temperature processes like cement and steel production are still searching for a viable solution that can be implemented at scale. A new way to capture solar heat could finally make solar thermal the choice for high-temperature industries. How it's made possible? Let's see in this video. I'm Abhishek and welcome to Revolutionary Engineering. Unlike solar cells that generate electricity, concentrating solar systems convert sunlight into solar thermal energy. The heat transfer medium in solar thermal provides thermal energy or steam for industrial processes, but the real challenge is to design a system that can efficiently transfer heat up to the range of 1000 degrees Celsius. Current solar converters show poor performance and high costs when process temperatures above 1000 degrees Celsius are required. But now, a team from ETH Zurich have designed a trap that can do this very efficiently. Until now, this was thought to work only at low temperatures. A device was made by attaching a synthetic quartz rod to an opaque silicon disk as an energy absorber. When exposed to the equivalent of 136 suns worth of energy flux, the absorber plate reached 1050 degrees Celsius. The other end of the quartz rod remained relatively cool at 450 degrees Celsius. A receiver without a quartz rod will need a much higher solar concentration to achieve the same temperature. This difference can make this tech acceptable for high temperature applications. But how does a quartz rod reduce the demand for higher solar concentrations for the same temperature? When opaque materials are exposed to solar radiation, they absorb it at their surface and transfer it by conduction across the walls. Thus, the highest temperature is achieved at the absorbing surface. On the contrary, solar radiation incident on semi-transparent materials can penetrate and undergo volumetric absorption. Many semi-transparent materials like quartz exhibit higher absorption coefficient in the infrared range than in the visible one. The absorption coefficient determines how far into a material light of a particular wavelength can penetrate before it is absorbed. Using the right combination of radiative source and semi-transparent material, it is possible to achieve higher temperatures in the bulk of the material than at the surface. To understand how this would work, let's consider an opaque absorber. When the solar radiation is incident on it, portion is lost as radiation since the radiation losses are dominant in high temperature range which is also the case with actual solar receivers. This significantly reduces the thermal efficiency of the heat transfer device which is the ratio of useful heat and incident solar radiation, where the useful heat is the difference between the incident radiation and that lost from the surface. Now for an opaque heat transfer device, the surface temperature is greater than the absorber temperature on the other side which in turn is greater than the temperature of the heat transfer fluid T out that takes away the useful heat. But if we see the device with semi-transparent material attached, the surface temperature is less than the absorber temperature on the other side, which in turn is greater than the heat transfer fluid temperature. Thus, interestingly, for the same output temperature, thermal trapping occurring in the semi-transparent heat exchanger results in a lower surface temperature, reducing radiation losses and in turn increasing thermal efficiency. This is quite similar to a greenhouse effect seen on Earth that is believed to be the main driver for current climate change. To prove this experimentally, a cylindrical 74mm diameter and 300mm length quartz rod was positioned horizontally and insulated. Concentrated solar radiation from the high flux solar simulator entered the rod from the left face. The right face of the quartz rod is in contact with an opaque silicon carbide disc serving as a solar absorber. The red dots along the rod axis from 11 to 15 and on the absorber disk 16 are thermocouples measuring the temperature of the semi-transparent material. These thermocouples were introduced in radial holes manufactured in the quartz rod such that the temperature points lie along its axis. T16 measured the temperature at the interface with the rod. The experiment lasted for up to 8 hours and the heating progressed until steady state conditions were reached. Target steady state temperature of the absorber obtained was 1050 degrees Celsius, while the surface temperature of the quartz rod on the extreme left was 450 degrees Celsius, 
that confirm the thermal trap effect in an actual working setup. This is the image of the glowing quartz at the end of the experiment. The thermocouples can be seen inside the rod. If we see the variation of thermal efficiency with quartz length, the unshielded receiver has thermal efficiency of 40% at a concentration ratio of 500. While with the addition of 300 mm quartz, the efficiency reaches to 70% which is 75% jump over that of the unshielded one. Here the concentration ratio is the ratio of the concentrated flux on the receiver to the ambient flux from the sun. So a C500 means the flux that is 500 times that from the sun. This technology seems to have the potential to drastically improve the efficiency of concentrating solar receivers, especially where increasing concentration is not feasible. This increased efficiency can also bring down the overall cost of the concentrated solar system. However, the phenomena is yet to be demonstrated at an industrial scale. But this was all about utilizing the solar heat directly and only when it's available. What about the case when the heat needs to be stored efficiently and utilized later? This video has the answer.